we had a epic storm last night. It was with 14 hours of non-stop heavy rain. And Schism has been out in it all night long. So I've just turned up a bit early because we're going off on a three-day sail today. I'm going to be living on Schismo for three days and uh, I suspect that she might be full of water. She's not too bad. I thought there'd be more water than that but anyway I've still got a bit of pumping to do to get that out. I'll do it. It's not raining anymore anyway. It'll soon uh, it'll soon dry out when I get going. Right. I have loaded the boat for 3 days boat camping. If you've ever seen Jaws and there's the, the line, you're going to need a bigger boat. That's me today. I'm going to need a bigger boat. So, look at all this stuff. Underneath the foredeck, I've got a roll mat, my boom tent, which is in an old sail bag, and the crutch for the boom tent, paddle, two oars and a bed. Behind the mast I've got an anchor which if I need quick I've got no chance. In front of that is a dry bag full of clothes. In front of that the blue dry bag has got my sleeping bag in it. Underneath both of those is a 10 litre water tank. Behind the galley box is uh, a washing up bowl. On top of it is a bivy loo. The galley box, the other oar, I've got a uh, collapsible bucket just there. In front of that, I've got two cartons of oat milk, uh, a small water bowser, which is easy to get to for when I'm gonna make lunch today. And if I need a drink of water, another flask of water. In there I have got some snacks, I've got some gas and I've got a flask of coffee. Uh, coming further back along this side at the front. So when I'm rigging the boat, that's my working side. So I've put my boxes of food on my non-working side. So there's one, two, three boxes of food. That's a camera bag, which isn't waterproof, but there's only things in there that they're not uh, electronic or anything, so they're not. It doesn't matter if they get damp. Uh, what else? Right, I have got under there at the back. I've got some footwear, and I've got a bag of bungees. Under there, I've got some booties and my camera case. In there is a load of ropes which always live there. That one is normally empty, but today has got all sorts in there. It's got my solar charger and um, my charging cables. It's got, can't remember, some other stuff. It's, anyway, things I'm gonna need, possibly fairly quickly, uh, and possibly just to make life a little bit more comfortable. And not that it really matters, well, I don't know, does it matter? It's a good habit to get into, I suppose. But I have a little um, net here with a waterproof notepad and pencil because I tend to keep a log of all my journeys. So there you go. Look at that. What a busy boat. So I've got to put my masthead float up before I set off. Um, and decide if I'm going to reef or not. Uh, just before I get going, I'm 
dressed like this because the forecast is not great today. The wind is dropping, which is nice because it's been blowing a hoolie since I got here four days ago. And um, it, is, it is calming down a bit as the day goes on, but it is still blowing force four at the minute. I'm in a sheltered area just here, so you can't tell, but when, uh, when I get out there, uh, it's going to blow a bit more. And we've got a downpour coming uh, mid-afternoon, so rather than me scrabble about when it comes, I'm, I'm dressed ready for it. Hopefully, fingers crossed, that once that happens, the sun's going to come out and it's going to stay out until I go home on Sunday. So, this is my home for three days. I think we are ready. So, what I'm going to do... So that boat there is a 19 foot sea witch and that's been helmed by Jeremy, uh, a member of Hickling Broad Sailing Club and local to the area, font of all knowledge, and he will be accompanying me on this uh, three day excursion. I think my little nose heavy, which doesn't surprise me because I've got everything but the kitchen sink. In fact, I have got a kitchen sink there as well. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the bow's a little bit low in the water than normal. That's Reed Island over there. It is an island, it just looks like it's part of the contour of the broad, but it is a separate little island. <laughs> I thought I might as well sail in company with you. So I've just pulled up to our lunchtime, uh, well I think it's the right place, destination stop. Uh, I'm a quicker boat than Jeremy obviously, so I'm just waiting for him to come round the corner and then we'll decide if this is where we're going to stay and set up camp for lunch before we head off to our nighttime destination. everything back in its place now galley box up the front and uh, a little bit of washing up to do later on and ready to get going again 
a couple of chaps just came by in a broads boat and recognised the boat from the YouTube channel. It's made my day. Fantastic. So, uh, speaking of which, like and subscribe. That would do me a big favour. I'm going to put the sail up now. And Jeremy's just taken the reef out. Okay, let's get going. On the next leg. Very dark there look got a bit of rain coming this way so I may have to just stop and put my waterproof top on changing rivers here I will have to jibe around this corner Coming up here is uh, Martham Swing Bridge, dating back to the 1920s, I believe. And it's a swing bridge that the, it's normally open. It's only closed when uh, the occasional car wants to get across. The bridge part, which spans across the river, is actually on flutes.
knew I was going to get rained on. Thankfully I put my top on. trouble is now that we're under this cloud that's raining on us and I think we're going with it so wherever I sail now with the wind behind me it's going to be raining on top of me typical it's a bit shallow here as well we've got lily pads lily pads down the side got a dredging a vessel ahead of us There's Schismo moored up in Somerton, so this is on the turn, and that bit there, right at the end, is about as far as we can go in the boat. But it's very peaceful, there's no one else here, and, uh, and the rain stopped, which is nice, because that was, uh, that was a bit miserable. So we had our coffee, enjoyed the fact that the rain stopped and the sun came out, got back in our boats and sailed back up the narrow channel to a place called Dungeon's Corner. And this is our view for the night and the morning, there we are. And then the boom tent is up ready and that's where we'll be staying for the night. I am cooking with stuff that doesn't require a fridge and so tonight I have got rice, sweet potato, green pepper and some tikka masala sauce. And in the words of uh, Paul from Sailing Kate Louise, it's really very nice. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> There's my bed made for the ready for the night. Nice camp bed in the middle, sleeping bag. Comes complete with a gorgeous sunset. Perfect. Dinghy cruising can be quite restrictive sometimes. You've got not got a lot of space, and uh, you've got the uh, compromises to make. But waking up to this, it's peaceful. I can hear nature and wildlife doing its thing. It's just so lovely. It's well worth it. for breakfast with cinnamon and banana. Very nice. A lovely combination of tastes. Cinnamon and banana. After breakfast I washed up, put the bedding away, put the camp bed away, put the boom tent away um, and then got ready to go to our lunchtime destination for day two which was Potter Hyam. And here I am again at Martham Swing Bridge. Very little wind at uh, Martham Swing Bridge this morning, hence me having to row.
that's one of uh, the Hunter fleet. That's the th uh, third of three boats, I think, that have just come through the bridge. So they've lowered their masts to come under there. And then they moor up over there, put their rigging back up, and then carry on sailing on the broads. Beautiful boats. And for lunch today, I am having pasta. Cheesy pasta, bacon-y kind of dehydrated thing which just add water and let it sit for five minutes which is dead easy for lunchtime got the galley box out again boat is a bit of a mess because I'm just trying to rearrange things and decide where things should live so I'm gonna have a bit of a tidy up in a minute after I've had my lunch Well, this direction is a bit more relaxed, so the wind is behind me this time. And uh, I'm scooting along quite nicely. Second half of the day. So it seems the wind's in the wrong direction for the Norfolk Broads a lot of the time. But I guess for the the rest of the lot of the time it's in the right direction it just depends where you decide to go and when you decide to go there
had my dinner, which was noodles, sweet potato, pep red pepper and pad thai sauce. That was really very nice. So now I'm washing up. So I'm showing you how I do my washing up. So I rinsed the pan that I made the food in, in the water that the boat's floating in, just to get rid of all the chunky bits. Then I filled it with water from my container here and boiled it. And I have this collapsible washing up bowl. And I have a little pot of uh, washing up liquid with me. And this brush lives in my galley box. So, making sure that the water's hot so I get uh, a bit of a sterilising effect, I suppose. Try not to burn my fingers. Got a bit of grass in here as well, because the grass is blowing in through the side of the tent. down here I have got a tea towel which is where I'm putting the things to drip dry a bit while I finish the rest of the washing up and then when that's done I will empty this washing up bowl I will dry using the towel all the other bits and then just put them in the washing up bowl which will be empty of water while I sort out where everything goes and then I have a clean slate for tomorrow morning's breakfast Dehydrated oh, pasta. Ah, oh, I've done it again. Uh, and noodle things at lunchtime. black around the edges because my trangier used to be the when you get them they, they come as a spirit stove oh what a nightmare that was so I had I bought the gas conversion kit so that's now fastened to um, a gas canister because the spirit stove apart from being dangerous it just covers everything in soot Right, so that can go out there. Right, now, actually, what I will do, I'll just give that a little rinse. Right. Put all that in here. 
two tow back. And then I can do my trying. That goes in there. Goes on top when I put it all away. Voila, and then this collapses down flat. Amazing. So I'm sure no one's interested, but if you wondered how I do my washing up, that's how I do my washing up. On a boat, of course, different at home. The routine for the second night was the same as the night before. And this was my view as I was preparing the boat for sleeping. Beautiful. So I've left the boat on the water at uh, Somerton, 
First time I've left the boat on its own, so I'm feeling a bit anxious about that. But one of the beauties of dinghy cruising can sometimes be in finding places you wouldn't normally find. So I am now in uh, a place called West Somerton and there's a ruin of an old church, St Mary's Church, and it is, it dates back to the 13th century and it's got a tree growing in the middle of it, as you can see and it was abandoned in the 17th century so it's amazing how it's still standing really it's so old uh, and we've had to trek through all sorts of footpath and woodland to get to it You can see here some of the stonework, so it's still round the top of the window arch there, but all this has been stolen we reckon. Probably end up in someone's manor house or car boot sale or eBay. Yeah, the bits at the top difficult to access are still there. I've been chipped away from the side. Anyway, that's something a bit different, isn't it? It's not a boat, it's not the water, it's a little point of interest. If you're not a local and you fancy something to do for an hour, it's quite a nice walk. Come and have a look at this church. Uh, admire the craftsmanship that they had back then in the 13th century with limited tools and see what a great job they did. Right, I'm going to walk back to the boat now and sail off to our lunchtime destination. We had lunch, same as uh, the previous two days. Um, then we made our way back to Hickling Broad Sailing Club. And that's where I'd arranged uh, with them. I actually bought a temporary membership for the week um, so I could make use of their slipway and uh, somewhere to leave the car while I was away for three days so a big thank you to Hickling Broad Sailing Club uh, especially Jeremy who sailed with me for those three days uh, also thank you to the people on the DCA Facebook page who were very supportive in their comments as I was documenting my trip I also want to mention what a great community the dinghy cruising community is everyone I met on my route uh, were both interesting and engaging um, very supportive very polite um, and had all the time in the world to talk about things dinghy cruising it's always fascinating how different boats are set up how people approach things in different ways but we all get to the same point eventually which I think is the dinghy cruising mantra we're in no hurry to get anywhere quick we just have to get there 
thanks for watching it's very much appreciated if it's your first time on the channel please consider subscribing it does encourage me to make more videos and i will see you on the next one which coincidentally is in the norfolk broads and it will be an rya dinghy trail there will be links in the description below to some of the gear i used on this trip and to the uh, hicklin broad sailing club website thanks again see you next time